Okay, welcome everybody. I think we can start. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is uh, show you some of the ways that you can make impasto on SketchClub and also some of the ways that you can use textures. Um, many people showed a lot of interest in my impasto techniques and uh, textures have been used for a, a couple of years now in, uh, in SketchClub. So I'd like to start with uh, the textures and then um, sh also show you how to um, how to make the impa uh, the impasto uh, effects later. Um, but starting with uh, the textures. Okay, so first question already. Um, what is impasto? Uh, impasto is the, um, the thickness of the paint and um, when you're uh, oil painting and you're using really thick paint and you're bringing it on then that gives a little effect of shadows and highlights. Uh, you can actually see the thickness of it. That's all that impasto is. It gives a, a, a realness to your, uh, to your painting. So this all comes down to the same technique. Um, there is a way to make surface texture in SketchClub. Um, and I think that is uh, the first thing I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a little texture and then show you how to make it um, come off the paper, so to say. Okay, I'm starting with choosing a brush. This is one of the uh, of of the um, standard brush types. It's a it's it's a little um, slanting thing, and I've just altered the settings a bit. But you should find it uh, in your in your uh, uh, brush settings. Just showed you the brush uh, one more time. Did you get that? Okay. Next thing I do now, I have made um, a, 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 a basic paper, and now I'm going to make it embossed. And the uh, first thing I need to do is make a white layer above my um, uh, my image. Okay, what I forgot to say is I also need to make a copy of, uh, of, my, um, of my paper layer. And uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set the white layer to difference mode. And the effect is it is going to, uh, it, it's going to invert the, uh, the image uh, below. Um, 
So black becomes white and white becomes black. But now I'm going to drop this uh, white layer onto my layer. And then it, um, uh, the white layer should disappear and we have uh, two paper layers uh, on top of each other and they are completely um, inverted. So next I am going to set the top version uh, to 50% uh, transparency. Now this only looks like a totally gray image, but in fact it are two uh, images on top of each other that are completely cancelling each other out. So the only reason that you're seeing a, a, gray, uh, a, a gray image is because all the white in the bottom is compensated by uh, a, a black spots in, in the top uh, that are set to 50% transparency. So um, uh, everything cancels each other out. So um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to make um, we're going to um, dislocate the the top one, uh, version just a little bit, and everywhere where these images are um, uh, different from each other, you're going to see. Uh, an emboss effect. Yeah, when you look in the, the, the transform menu and you look at how many pixels you're actually um, uh, displacing them, it's only one or two uh, pixels, sometimes five. It depends a bit on how big your texture is. What I usually do is also is uh, zoom in quite a bit before I start uh, before I use transform so that I can really see how much I am um, um, displacing it. Um, so this is the basic procedure for embossing an, an image. You make a copy of it, you invert the top version, set it to 50% and then uh, use transform to just slightly displace it. Now, there is a reason I'm not using the invert filter because um, as I understand f um, from Blackborn, uh, the invert filter is meant for photographers who want to uh, use uh, negatives and it takes gamma into account so it is not a uh, it's, it's not the same uh, inversion as when you use a white difference layer
Okay, um, any questions so far? Okay, um, so um, how, uh, what are some ways to use this, uh, 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 this texture? Um, uh, usually you set it to overlay and you use it uh, on top of your, um, your actual sketch. And um, I'm just gonna, uh, gonna show you how that works. Now, overlay never works uh, on a purely white layer, so uh, you need to, to give it a little color in order for this, this paper texture to come through. Um, one of the uh, characteristics of using overlay is that it uh, only shows up in um, textures, or, uh, sorry, it only shows up in colors that are medium, medium gray or in the mid-range. Um, it doesn't show up in the blacks, it doesn't show up in the whites, and it doesn't show up in the pure colors like uh, pure red or pure blue or pure magenta. Uh, so one other way that you can make uh, a texture is by um, making a photo of a texture that you see in your area. And in my apartment building, uh, there is a floor that I found interesting. So what I'm going to show you is how you can make um, uh, an actual texture from a photograph. Now, this is an, a nice floor texture and I'd like to use it, but I would like to make a, a, a grey brick, so to speak, from it, um, so that I can use it in overlay. So remove the color, remove the, the strange uh, light spot in the middle and uh, make it a real texture. Okay. So these are the steps. First I am going to remove the color by using the, uh, the, the basic, what, what's it called, the um, adjust color filter. That's it. Good. So all color is gone now. Um, next, I'm going to do uh, to make a copy of this uh, layer. And next, I am going to make a white difference layer on top of the two. Now, does that look familiar? Well, instead of um, uh, using the trans, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> uh, instead of displacing it, um, I'm going to use a filter. I'm going to use a blur filter. Okay, now what you saw me do was a last minute decision, decided not to use the normal blur but to use Gaussian blur because it is stronger.
Now I'm going to clean this up. I'm just I'm going to merge these two layers down so that it's one layer, and then I am going to um, uh, uh, I'm going to crop them a little so that my foot is no longer visible, and uh, the sides are not to my liking. So I'm going to to crop it a bit. Now what this procedure has done is uh, it has removed all the darks and the light spots and just preserved the texture but it is not very clear so we can enhance it by uh, making uh, a copy of this, uh, these layers and setting the top one to overlay. Now this is uh, this is already better, but I want it. I want contrast to be enhanced a bit more. So I'm going to copy um, uh, to use copy down to copy the top layer down to the bottom one. Um, so next I copied the, uh, the overlay layer a couple of times more to make uh, the contrast even more and then um, I merged them down so now it's one layer. There is a reason why I am using overlay to enhance contrast instead of using the uh, adjust color filter. Um, and it is that I want an overlay texture image to be to, to, to average towards a 50% grayscale. If I were to use Gaussian blay on this image and I, it would completely gray out, the gray would be 50% gray. And that's important because in overlay, 50% gray means there's no effect at all. And you want an overlay texture uh, not to darken or lighten your image too much. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, to recap, to make uh, uh, a texture from a photo, what you do is you uh, make it grayscale with the filter, uh, then you make a copy, um, invert uh, the top version by uh, uh, with a difference over uh, with a difference uh, white layer, drop it down, uh, set the top version to 50%. And then use Gaussian blur to make it uh, very blurry and then um, drop it down. Okay, I'm going to take a five minute break and when I come back I'm going to show you how to make uh, impasto.
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is, uh, this is an old sketch of mine, and I'm going to um, um, to make it, to turn this into uh, an impasto painting, uh, so that it looks like it's an oil painting where the, the paint is so thick that you can see it. There's a reason I've chosen this painting, because um, uh, when you use an overlay texture, the, the texture will show up in this image, because all the colors are relatively um, not too saturated, they are all in the mid-range. So first thing I'm going to show you is how you emboss this image and it's basically the same procedure that we already discussed. Now that is basically the same procedure. Uh, I've made an embossed version of my image. Now let's see how it, um, how it holds up as an overlay texture on my original sketch. Um, the effect is really subtle. Um, I'm going to enhance it a bit by using a different, uh, a different technique and showing you how that works. Um, I've already made a copy of the, the grayscale version of the original sketch and I'm going to take it from there. Now, I'm, instead of using uh, the, the transform tool, I'm going to use blur. And I have set blur to, um, um, to be relatively uh, weak, uh, to have a relatively weak effect. And then I'm just going to uh, brush over the, uh, the, top one, the top layer. So uh, the difference between the two techniques is with this uh, uh, technique you can um, get more into a painterly mode and you can start, um, um, y you can control how much, eff uh, how much the effect is applied. And um, on the other hand, uh, it is less sharp. The, the, uh, the first version, uh, th uh, the first technique that I showed you with the, the transform um, that uh, gives you sharper edges and I'm going to combine the two now Uh, the nice thing about overlay is that you can uh, you can combine two overlay textures and uh, so uh, with the top one I set it to overlay um, the gray areas will stay gray will not be affected and um, I'm using the transparency uh, to to adjust how much of each I want to use.
actually this is simply embossing uh, your your image and it, it doesn't really look like impasto as if it is uh, painted on and that's I'm gonna show you that in a minute um, but this is this is a nice effect so far indeed uh, it, it looks like um, there are some highlights and that the the images um, that the surface is um, coming from uh, that the surface is thick um, so to speak yeah Now that's the word I was looking for. It looks 3D. Um, questions so far? <laughs> 